Hello everybody, this is Lara with your end of the week analysis for the gold cash market for the trading week ending Friday 13th of August 2021. Both Elliott Wave counts remain valid but the bearish Elliott Wave count is still preferred. The bearish Wave count expects that the bounce, that upward movement of the last three days is a counter trend bounce to end here or very soon indeed and thereafter the target for the next wave down is at 1568. For the very short term, if we see a new low below 1751.48, that would add some confidence that the bounce is over. The bullish wave count expects that this is the start of a new upward trend to a target at 2078. Elliott wave analysis first, classic analysis last. At the weekly chart level, this is the bullish wave count, and then we'll look at the bearish wave count second. This bullish wave count expects that the low in December 2015 was the end of the bear market and the start of the bull market for gold. And subdividing as an impulse, a super cycle degree first wave is labelled. Cycle waves 1 and 2 are complete, well off to the left of the chart. Here's the end of 3, 4 is a triple zigzag and 5 unfolding as an impulse, with primary 1 and a very deep correction for primary 2, now in the early stages of a primary degree third wave for this wave count, so an increase in upward momentum and support from volume would be expected as it gets underway. If primary wave 2 continues any lower, it may not move beyond the start of 1, below 1677.64. Let's take a look at this at the daily chart level, where this low here, the start of primary wave 1, is this point here. From this low to this high, this wave count sees this upward wave as a 5 wave impulse, which will fit. And from this high to this low, this wave count sees this downward movement as a 3 wave zigzag, subdividing 5, 3, 5. And it has a really good fit at lower time frames. Both my wave counts see this subdividing as 5, this is a 3, and this is a 5. 5, 3, 5 is how a zigzag subdivides. It's also how 1, 2, 3 of an impulse subdivides. So I'm considering both scenarios and considering a bull and a bear wave count. If we have a first wave over here and a second wave over here, then a third wave should have begun and the target is for primary 3 to reach 1.618 the length of primary 1 at 2078. The target for cycle 5 remains the same for it to reach 1.618 the length of cycle 1 at 2094. If this target is wrong, it may not be high enough. And when we have primary 3 and 4 complete, I'll use primary degree Fibonacci ratios between 1, 3 and 5 to calculate a target for 5 for you. I can't do that yet. So toward the end, if this turns out to be the correct wave count, the target may well be recalculated. At the hourly chart level, here's the end of primary wave 2 and the start of primary wave 3, and I'm going to label intermediate wave 1 incomplete and subdividing as an impulse with minor waves 1, 2, and 3 incomplete, minute 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to unfold. When minor 4 arrives, it may not move into wave 1 price territory below 1751.48. And that now becomes an important price point, which for the short term next week will differentiate the bull and bear wave counts. Draw an acceleration channel around upward movement. Draw the first trend line from the end of minor 1 to the last high and place a parallel copy on the end of minor 2. As price keeps going higher, keep redrawing the channel and when minor wave 3 may be complete, then that channel would be drawn using Elliott's first technique. At that stage, the lower edge may show where minor 4 may find support. At the weekly chart level, this wave count is bearish. It considers that low in December 2015 as the end of wave A of a huge expanded flat, and here's the end of wave B and the start of wave C. In a, the larger picture, at the monthly and quarterly chart level, C's Gold is still within a huge fourth wave at grand super cycle degree, unfolding as an expanded flat. Expanded flats are pretty common structures. It's slightly squished up, but here's an example. If we do put to label, I'm sorry, if we were to put labels on this expanded flat for primary B, we'd have A down here, B over up here, and C over down here. Notice B moves beyond the start of A. 
that makes expanded flats particularly difficult structures to analyse because the B wave makes the price extreme beyond the start of the A wave, convincing us that it's not a B wave, it's a new trend, and it does that before the C wave takes off in the other direction. Supercycle C would be expected to move at least a little beyond the end of Supercycle A at 1046. The target would expect it to do that. At 657, Supercycle C would reach 1.618 the length of Supercycle A. Supercycle C may only subdivide as a five-wave motive structure, and if this is correctly labelled as cycle wave 1 as a five-wave leading expanding diagonal, that means supercycle C may only be an impulse, because if it were to be the only other possible structure, an ending diagonal, its first wave would have to subdivide as a zigzag. It can't be a five-wave motive structure, as this may be here. So that depends on my degree of labelling being correct here for cycle wave one. And so far this looks about right for a cycle degree first wave. This is a leading expanding diagonal, and it's followed by a deep bounce for a second wave, which was deeper than the 0.618 Fibonacci ratio of cycle wave one. And that's a common tendency for a second wave following a leading diagonal in a first wave position. Cycle wave 3 may have begun there and may only subdivide as an impulse within it. Primary 1 and 2 may be complete. I may also need to again move the degree of labelling here down 1. I'll keep this labelled as primary 1 and 2 for now. We'll see how this downward wave looks. If it looks like a primary degree third wave, then I'll leave it as is, but I might need to change the degree of labelling. Primary 3, 4 and 5 would be required to complete an impulse for cycle wave 3. The target is for it to reach 2.618 the length of cycle 1 at 887. I'm using that Fibonacci ratio because it fits so well with the lower target for super cycle C. Let's take a look at the daily chart now where this low here for cycle 1 is this point back down here. From this low to this high this upward movement looks really Look, does look best as a three wave zigzag but it can be seen as a five wave impulse as well both will fit it looks okay as a zigzag although it's got a very short a wave and a long extended c wave it's absolutely entirely possible it's just not as common as a and c reaching equality in length sometimes a or c is extended it's the concept of extensions it's part of our understanding of Elliott wave so this could be the end of a zigzag and the start of a third wave at cycle degree with primary 1, a complete 5 wave impulse, primary 2, a double combination and primary 3 beginning with intermediate 1 could be over at this week's low and intermediate 2 could be over at Friday's high or it looks like it needs to move a little bit higher with the close practically at the high for the session. It looks like intermediate 2 may continue a little bit higher early next week and then we'd expect a third wave at intermediate and primary and cycle degree. This wave count is now becoming extremely bearish. The next movement down for this wave count is expected to have a lot of strength. And the fifth wave to end one or more of intermediate three, primary three and or cycle three could be particularly explosive to the downside. That's a common behavior of commodities. Intermediate two, May not move beyond the start of 1 above 1832.17. At the hourly chart level, here's the end of intermediate 1, and now we're seeing this upward bounce as a zigzag labelled A, B, C, subdividing 535 five, with a short A wave and a long extended C wave. With price closing practically at highs and no bearish candlestick reversal pattern on the hourly chart, it looks likely intermediate 2 is not over and is probably going to continue a little bit higher. When intermediate 2 is over, then intermediate 3 downward would be expected to begin. I want to see three things on the hourly chart to have confidence that intermediate 2 is over. First, if we see a bearish candlestick reversal pattern on the hourly chart, that would give some first confidence. It doesn't mean that if we don't have a bearish reversal pattern, then intermediate 2 can't be over. But if we do see a bearish candlestick reversal pattern, that would add confidence. And that would be the earliest indication it could be over. Next, I would want to see a breach of this best fit channel by a clear 
downward movement, not sideways. It has to be at least one full hourly candlestick of clear downward movement. It has to be a red candlestick below and not touching this trend line and preferably with some strength, a reasonable length real body. And finally, if we see a new low below 1751.48 next week, I would have confidence Intermediate 2 should be over and Intermediate 3 down should then be underway. OK, classic technical analysis now. Which of those two wave counts has more support from classic analysis? At the weekly chart level, this last upward trend reached very extreme and RSI reached overbroad, and there it exhibited clear, strong, double bearish divergence with price. Given those extreme conditions and weakness evidenced by RSI, we then see two bearish candlestick patterns, a shooting star and a big bearish engulfing candlestick pattern, which impressively has good support from volume. Given those conditions, it's unsurprising we've got downward movement. Now, support at 1675 is holding very strong. We have a hammer candlestick pattern here suggesting a bounce. We got it. And we've got this week another huge long lower wick on this hammer candlestick pattern. Let's look inside the week to make a judgment about volume though. Support is holding really strong at 1675. On balance volume is in a tight range, may give a signal next week, but that's going to be a weak signal if it does break out. ADX is indicating a downward trend at this stage, and this is a very bearish signal from ADX. This is the strongest signal it can give when it comes up from reasonably low levels and rises from, both, from below both DX lines. So this supports a bearish Elliott wave count. Whereas the hammer candlestick patterns support a bullish Elliott wave count. RSI is neutral, plenty of room for this downward trend to continue, plenty of room for an upward trend to develop. Stochastics neutral and MACD overall bearish. What about the short term picture this week? This isn't a candlestick reversal pattern. This is not a hammer because the real body is too large. For a hammer, the long lower wick needs to be twice the length of the real body but it is still a pretty bullish long lower wick, support holding strong about 1682. Now we've got some upward movement, but quite crucially, again, we keep seeing this, a bullish engulfing candlestick lacks support from volume. Again here, lacks support from volume. And now these two candlesticks, the start of potentially a new upward movement, if we agree with the bullish Elliott wave count, this is the start of a third wave. It lacks support from volume that really is rather concerning for that wave count. This could be a normal reaction after a strong piece of downward movement, a counter trend movement to relieve pressure, look for resistance about 1800, and then look for strength if you're own analysis is bullish, you need to start to see strength and volume supporting upward movement from price. If we don't get it, that supports the bearish case. So far, we haven't got it. On balance volume remains below resistance. This isn't particularly strong now because the break here below support weakens this trend line. But it's had a test here and it's come back up again. This may assist to halt a rise in price early next week. It may force this counter trend bounce to end very soon, which is what the Elliott wave count expects. RSI is in neutral territory. ADX was indicating a downward trend at the daily chart level. It's declining for Friday, but if it turns up again, it would be then very strongly bearish at both the daily and weekly chart level. That supports the main Elliott wave count. ATR increases as price falls, drops off as price rises. There was more strength in this downward movement than there is in this upward movement. That supports a bearish Elliott wave count. Stochastics neutral, plenty of room for price to rise or fall. MACD bearish, supporting a bearish Elliott wave count. That's all from me this week with your gold analysis. I hope that all of our members are having a most fabulous weekend.